just got back from some international travels and I have got some tips on how you can pack your camera gear on those travels. I literally just got back, so why don't we just unpack this thing? Tubulars, welcome back to the channel. And if you are new here, this is a place where I help you level up your creative endeavors and so that you can go do things that matter. So think about subscribing. And not to mention, I have the official prestigious mentor button because I guess I helped one of my kids with their entrepreneurial project at school. And so I'm feeling very fish. So I figured I would just kind of share that knowledge today in that uh, official capacity. Speaking of capacity, what I have here is the Atlas Athlete camera backpack. This is like a hiking and traveling pack. I love this thing. It expands up to 40 liters and yes, it expands up to, like literally you can shrink this down to make it a bit smaller. This is a carry on size. I did carry it on. I will talk about the pack, the features, but I really want to spend some time on the international travel aspects because I did go through customs several times. I didn't have to like open it up, pull things out, tear things down. I have actually had to do that before with other packs, but not this one. However, your mileage may vary, folks. I'm not guaranteeing that the way I pack this thing or you pack your bags like a no custom agent will ever bother you. I'm just saying that I went through multiple times on uh, both ends. I ended up uh, going to Belize and I had to go through customs several times because we went to an island from there. So I made it all the way through without having to break any of this down. So speaking of breaking it down, we're gonna start from the top, get this stuff decompressed a little bit. We will get into the camera uh, aspects of it, which actually I love the fact that it is a rear access. But yes, this is a water repellent rip stop shell that is tough. I've had this thing on the boat. I've had it in like the dust, the sand, the dirt, the rocks, the jungle, like all over the place. So let's get this thing opened up. And first, oh, we're going to talk about the secret pocket. Well, we're just gonna go right for the secret pocket. I love the fact that it has this nice little pocket here on the inside. So again, flap, open that up. Easy access if I need to, and get in there and get those oh, passports and boarding passes and whatnot. So that's what I kept in there. And also I ended up keeping my uh, creative, not really journal, just like ideas that I put together and throw in there. So anyway, but we'll just kind of move, and keep moving. So what you also have here is a smaller, oh, and YKK zippers. And it actually has this like weather ceiling that keeps out like a lot of that dust and dirt and gr because Belize is beautiful. It is beautiful. But I have to say that um, a lot of dust around, you know, driving around and in the sand. So anyway, opening up the smaller pocket that actually has a key tether clip. And I have some pens in here. Oh, wait, I got some. Oh, two dollar tip. I got a two dollar tip. So thank you very much. Some pens in here for all of those creative ideas. And a couple of receipts and oh like a toll booth like or not toll booth but we went over this like little toll bridge um on amber geese key bungees i'll tell you like your camera gear you never know like when you're gonna have to tie something down so in this top pocket here bigger pocket i mean this thing seriously like this thing so one of the things I tell, oh, and it's actually uh, upstairs because it ended up in my suitcase is a power converter. So like a uh, power supply. So you have, you can plug in multiple like USB or like hair dryers. I don't use hair dryer, but uh, when you're travel traveling internationally, you want to make sure that you have all of the plugs. I will link up a power converter, uh, but you want to make sure that you also are protecting your stuff from like power surges 
And because even in Belize, there there was something some deal with the power grid and they had to like cut the power, turn the power back on. So there were definitely surges that were happening. Um, but I loved having that power converter. I just felt more comfortable. Got my Beats headphones in there as well. And I mean, I could fit like, I don't know, a puppy or something in there. Ooh, there actually were puppies that we uh, did see at Secret Beach uh, in Belize. But yeah, I didn't bring a puppy home. So that's it for, you know, the front. Let's get into the uh, top and into it. I love the drawstring aspect of this. I, I, I do love that. And then you can stuff a lot of, like this is just a Montbell, um, very lightweight, just in case like there was a little bit of rain, drizzle, something. It, there wasn't, I didn't really, it was just for transitioning uh, from Belize to Colorado. It was just nice to have this jacket. And if the nights got a little chilly. Now, for international travel, one of the things that I do recommend is something like this, this particular case. I'll explain that in a second. You do have room for the laptop here. I have a 13 inch uh, MacBook. It's, yes, it's very thin. It does support up to a 15 inch laptop according to the manufacturer. 17 inch, I don't know about that, but I don't have a 17 inch to test it with, but I did test with a 15 and it was totally fine. A couple of magazines as well for reading on the plane or on, and I, I didn't, I didn't read. So that's about it. And I'm gonna explain like kind of like this, like a little level here, this kind of like ICU thing that's adjustable. Let's also say that we've got some great pockets here uh, for the Nalgene's. And of course the tripod, the gorilla pod here on this side. And oh yeah, before we get into the bag, the camera gear itself, a lot of these hiking packs and, and camera bags, there's like places to put like your SD cards, your cables, like all of this stuff right here. So by having this case, highly recommend this case. I have all of my cables laid out. I know what I need, HDMI, um, USB, uh, type C cables. Of course my, uh, well that's a type C cable for my T5. So I've got my T5 that I put backup uh, data on and then I also edit on this as well. Of course in the bottom, have the power brick for my computer. And also I did take my five inch monitor, my field world uh, monitor, I've just, it's still in the bag. I'll just leave it there for now. And then of course you never, well, I don't, where's the other piece? Yeah, I mean, lots of dust, lots of sand. So you definitely wanna be cleaning your lenses, your sensors. So I did bring that and a few like Allen wrenches and whatnot, almost forgot. Waterproof uh, SD card holder. I'll link all of this stuff up below. I really love this stuff. And I have used it since I've gotten it and it's I've had it for a while and I just keep using it because it just works. Of course, I've got my hub here, you know, the uh, type A USB and SD card reader for my computer. Even if I had to pull this out separately and just kind of put it on the conveyor belt, which I think I had done that once through the um, the process of going through customs, I just laid that out separately. They were able to determine everything that was in there, but I love the fact that I didn't have to like pull out SD cards, pull out batteries, cables, and whatever, them trying to figure out what stuff is. They had given me at least some feedback saying that they could figure out most of what everything was. They didn't even have to like open it up and pull it apart. So. That was a win. So, really important folks, the camera access here in the back. This is, I love this mesh here, breathable mesh, foam, YKK zippers, easily able to be pulled up and down. I didn't have any problems with them getting stuck. I will actually talk about the belt aspect of it. So you do actually get uh, a belt that, that comes with it. I, but, and then these like little pockets that I love that just kind of tuck away. I did not use the belt um, on this trip, but hiking using the belt for sure, because it just takes that pressure off of your shoulders and puts it more on your hips. So let's get into the access here. And this is a medium size. I would say like, you could probably put a couple of bodies in here. As you can see, I didn't put my drone. Oh, let me tell you, folks, if you're traveling internationally or anywhere, really, figure out what the rules are with the drones. Because I'll tell you, with Belize, and I'm, I'm kind of like kicking myself, and here, here's what happened. 
first off, do not try to sneak stuff in to a country if you're not allowed to bring it. So I go through customs and uh, literally, you know, get the paperwork, they check the passport, stamp it, do all the things, and then I get to the agent before the additional customs and security, and they didn't know like this was a camera bag. It looks like just a regular hiking pack. The gentleman asked me right from the get, do you have a drone? I didn't say anything about filmmaking, didn't talk about it, didn't have my camera out or anything. He asked me if I had a drone. Now, of course, I did tell him I am a filmmaker and have the YouTube channel and I do this commercially and just kind of explain like I looked on the website uh, for tourism and the rules and I did not bring a drone in. And what he did was he took a good look at me and he said, you should have emailed us and let us know you were coming and we would have given you permission to fly your drone because tourism is extremely like it's a it's the biggest industry there and they appreciate people who can respect the space the airspace people's privacy not flying over um, areas where you're not allowed to fly and he was like you should have asked because we would have let you bring your drone you just have to get the official permission so next time when I'm getting there I'm going to ask for permission to bring my drone but I did get some aerial shots because we had to charter a plane to the island where we stayed so I definitely got some pretty cool aerial shots it would have been nice to have the drone though but hey don't break the law because you know what I don't know where you are because if I have to bail you out I don't I didn't know that you left and I didn't know that you broke the rules so don't break the rules all right so getting into the bag here and what we have is the A6500 here with my Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 with the Peak Design clutch. And then of course my, my Rode uh, Video Micro that I use for vlogging and my audio. Now, before we get too deep into the other stuff, there's this amazing um, ICU, this component, because most camera bags, you're able to manipulate, move these things around, but they have this feature. So if I didn't need this space at the top and I needed it more, in here inside of the bag the drawstring top i can pull that get more space in that drawstring expandable area and actually i can access it from this panel which i love so i can actually access this extra space if i need it but obviously I needed that space for my camera. This is fairly shallow. It's not as deep as my Manfrotto Bumblebee 230. So the recommendation is if you have a lens that is longer than five inches, you may need to lay it down flat. But this Sony 18 to 105, I would say meets that criteria, uh, give or take but I didn't feel the need to lay it down because you know I just stick it there and even like this, I didn't feel like it was pressed onto the lens all that much and was gonna cause uh, damage or anything. So I was able to stand this 18 to 105 up. I have the Sony 85 mil here on this side. Working around, here's another thing that I also got like compliments on and comments about were these um, battery sleeves. So I do, yes, I do label all of my batteries. These are the FW50s and I brought uh, six of those batteries because you know that A6500 is chewing up that battery. So four uh, holds four in here, but what I also did because I brought my monitor is I'm able to fit, so I had six FW50s, but then I also had my monitor batteries, my F550s as well in this. And this was great because again, they could kind of differentiate like what was what and understood that these were batteries. And again, like these, even if I had to pull these out, at least they're all in the bag and I didn't, they weren't just like thrown all over and I pulled them out one by one. Keep going here. I've got the Manfrotto uh, tripod as well. I do have the Joby, you know, that was on the side, but this is kind of nice for lower profile tripod setups. So I just got this recently, but I, I really love it. Small rig clamp with the quarter 20 on the end. I did not, yeah, I didn't clamp this thing to anything. Backup battery and it's still juiced up because I didn't really need to, um, I didn't really need to use it, but I, I always bring the extra battery. So it's sunny and I use ND filters quite a bit. So my ND filter case right here. I also have the charger for the uh, F550s, charger for the FW50s. It's a dual uh, battery because you, you're gonna go through some batteries, you just are. So you need to try to charge as many as you can. Gaff tape, and this is a must. Camera strap, which you know what? A lot of you might think like, really? Um, or maybe some of you are like, oh yeah, for sure. Uh, the Peak Design strap with the, with the, 
don't know why I'm like flopping it around here. Uh, with the quick release, if, if you're really trying to stabilize a shot, get some B-roll and you don't have it set up on a tripod or you don't have a gimbal or stabilizer, it's really great to kind of you know create some tension and get those nice, nice smooth like rolling shots, dolly moves or whatever you're trying to do. I use this a couple of times. And got everything over here. And then of course, one of the things that I used a lot and I've got a full on review coming for you, a lot of stuff is the GoPro Hero 7 Black, that's about to fall out. The, the tripod that uh, it, you can get with it. And then of course the floaty. I definitely used the floaty a lot because I was we did a lot of um, snorkeling and water stuff. So water stuff, we snorkeled. And of course the, the camera itself, the battery charger with an extra battery. That's another one that you're gonna need an extra battery. I highly recommend that uh, to have at least two batteries. If not three, I have two. Uh, but all of this fits in this travel case and then obviously fits right in there. So like I said, this has like extra pockets, extra like zippers and things, like if you wanna put stuff there, but as far as like the electronic stuff or anything that could be questioned, I just, I didn't put anything in there. Um, one of the features that it also has as far as like from a comfort level is that, especially if this thing is getting heavy, is that you can adjust the straps from the top and the bottom just to kind of, you know, because sometimes if you want it hitting you low, hitting you high, wherever you need to kind of put the weight or get that comfort, that's really helpful to be able to adjust from the top. And like I was telling you, so with this pack being empty in the top, cinching this thing down, it really does make it uh, a smaller footprint. So it goes from like a 40 liter capacity uh, ability here down to, you know, maybe like between 25 and 30 or maybe even less than that. It just depends on how much you can cinch it down and, and pull uh, those straps. One of the other features that I just wanna let you know because from an international travel standpoint, you wanna be careful, you can put a uh, water bladder in this. It, it hangs in here and then you can actually run the tubing up through here and then uh, it comes out of this section here. I obviously, I did not do that, but you know, traveling with liquids and stuff that might get you flagged. So if you are hiking around wherever you are, just make sure that your bladder is empty, not while you're hiking around, but like before you go through, you know, security and customs and stuff. So just a heads up there. It does come with a frame. I did not have the frame because I wanted to be able to pack it down as much as possible when I needed to, but this is great for extended hikes, especially because it takes that pressure off of your shoulders and puts it onto your hips. Of course, the waist belt is also customizable. And what I mean by that is when you order from Atlas directly, what you will do is you will get an option depending on the size of the bag, meaning like the frame, you can get a frame that's meant for somebody up to five foot eight and uh, anybody from five foot seven on up. So depending on your size, they have options for the waist belt. I got the medium apparently, but it can actually go up to uh, large, uh, even with an extender. I love the fact that it's removable. Velcro's right in, and then you also have these additional pockets. Like the pockets stay in there, and you can tuck that like I had it before. But check this out, and again, just be mindful, like I said, when you're traveling, like what you're keeping in here, um, you can kind of put like, you know, food items or whatever. Also, if you want to put like a lens in there, just to kind of hold that just for easy access. Um, I mean, it actually goes further down, but if you need that for easier access when you're shooting, I have used um, my camera bags that way, the ones that have those options to put the lenses in there um, for easier access. So I don't have to necessarily take the pack off or get into the pack. Of course, water bottle. Easier to do that because if I don't wanna be grabbing, you know, back here, like it, it's, it's further up this way. Has this front pocket here. And of course, again, the zipper that has these seals that keep that dust and that moisture out. And I have to say it really did help with my camera gear because it was very dusty. Um, it also got uh, a little bit like wet from the boat, like sprayed from the boat, like we were on the boat a couple of days and then we were like driving around on the golf carts and a lot of dust flying up. 
So that was something to contend with as well. All right, so that is it in a shell of a pack. I probably have a lot more info that I could talk to you about the Atlas Athlete Pack. I love this pack. They do have a bigger version of that. I'm hoping that I might be able to test that one out as well. It's like a 70 liter pack. But regardless, folks, just be mindful of pre-planning your packing and knowing where everything is so that you can access it as you're doing your creative endeavors, but also if an agent is like, hey, what is this or where is that? And you can pull things out, but make it accessible all around. All right, folks, go out there and do things that matter and enjoy your travels. Be safe out there, even if it's in your own backyard. Keep rocking faces. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I cannot wait to see you lovely people on the next one.